Hey everyone, it's Big Smoons with a Platinum Review, where I talk about the games that I have the Platinum Trophy, or 100% on, and what it took to get there. I also review the games based on the amount of fun I had. Today, we're going to be talking about Final Fantasy VIII, the follow-up game to my first video, which was Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VIII was developed by Square and released in 1999. Following Final Fantasy VII onto the original PlayStation was quite the task, and Final Fantasy VIII took it on by switching up the style to a more realistic look for the characters. If you've been watching my videos for a while, then you know I love RPGs and character-driven games. Let's see if Final Fantasy VIII can hit Mark. We will be playing the remastered version that is currently available included with PlayStation Now. Let's get started. Final Fantasy VIII kicks off with a great cinematic, and what appeared to be a huge graphical improvement over Final Fantasy VII at the time. The characters look proportionate and more realistic. Our story starts with Squall, the main character, and in classic Final Fantasy fashion, you get to name him and the main female character of the game. I think characters are part of my problem with Final Fantasy VIII. I don't care about any of them. The main character Squall is standoffish and drab. I guess this could work well as acting as a blank canvas for the player, but his attitude is the antithesis to my own personality. The rest of the characters are lacking in great backstory. There's a plot device that links all of them together, and that idea was interesting, but it didn't add anything to the characters' personalities. This was a huge letdown after the varied and interesting characters from Final Fantasy VII, and this leads into the great character designs from Final Fantasy IX. I think taking a more realistic approach ultimately hurts the characters of Final Fantasy VIII. The story of Final Fantasy VIII starts at the Balam Garden, where a good number of our characters are in attendance. This is a military academy for a mercenary group, where you will be employed for the course of the game. This offers an interesting mechanic, where your characters are paid a salary depending on what rank you have achieved in the group. There's a lot of political deception and intrigue here. The story goes wild throughout, but I don't fault it for following the Final Fantasy formula. I enjoy the story here, even though it left me scratching my head and saying what more often than other games. The gameplay consists of turn-based battling, which frequent watchers know that I love. The unique addition to gameplay here is the use of the draw system. This allows party members to absorb certain spells from the field or from enemies. This is a unique twist on the magic systems of other JRPGs. There's no mana gauge, and you can cast spells until you run out of however many you drew. You can also slot these magic spells to your stats and completely break the game. Your level is mostly irrelevant, as you can just junction 99 of certain spells and shoot your stats through the roof. Due to this system, you can rip through most fights in the game with relative ease. Grinding levels is less important than finding exactly where to draw certain magics from. In fact, this is one of the few Final Fantasy games where the enemies scale in level with you. This makes bosses much harder at higher levels than you would imagine. It seems counterintuitive, especially if you have played the other games in the series before 8. I give Final Fantasy 8 an 8 out of 10 for fun. Even though I don't connect with the characters of the game, as much as the ones from 7, there are some exciting moments here. I appreciate that they tried something new with the junction system, even though it wasn't implemented quite as well as I would have liked. To me, Final Fantasy VIII does not hold a candle to its predecessor. It is difficult to rate games in a series and not compare them to the other ones in that series. However, looking at Final Fantasy VIII on its own, it is easy to recommend the game. It is my least favorite of the PlayStation 1 Final Fantasy games, but the fact that I believe it's still a great game is a testament to just how good the entire series is. Let's talk trophies. There are 35 trophies here, and most will come from learning all of the summons of this game, which are called Guardian Forces. As a matter of fact, this accounts for nearly half the trophies. Some are earned automatically through the story, some are drawn from certain enemies in the game, and some are in secret areas. You have to max out your health, instead of your level for this game, which is easy enough to pull off with certain guardian forces and junctions. A couple others will come naturally, like killing 100 enemies and collecting your first salary. Snag the collectible magazines and play some triple triad. You have to lose a rare card, so just save before that. Beat the masters of triple triad 
and face the secret ultimate boss in true Final Fantasy fashion. This game, like 7 before it, have cheats in the remastered version. This will help you run through the game. One puts the game into triple speed, one maxes out your health and limit in battle, and one makes you avoid random battles. Using these three in conjunction with the junction system, and you can get all of the trophies in no time. This list is not particularly difficult, and it's a good game despite at the flaws that I see with it. With that in mind, I recommend you get that platinum. Thanks for watching everyone. As long as the servers aren't overloaded, I've been streaming my Final Fantasy XIV playthrough on Twitch at Big Smoons. I also want to talk about Final Fantasy IX as a candidate for an episode of the Platinums That Could Have Been series. I'd love to talk about the game, but I can't get the Platinum without using Remote Play and a Keylogger. I'll talk more about it during the video. Thanks guys. Be good to yourselves.